good to see each of you this morning. If you are a guest or a visitor this morning, we are indeed grateful to have you to come and to share with us, with us in our worship service this morning. If you have not had an opportunity to fill out a visitor's card, we ask that you just raise your hand and one of our ushers will make sure that you get one. We ask that if you are worshiping with us this morning, whether in person or online, we ask that you do not try to multitask while we are engaged in our worship service. We ask that you sing when we sing. We ask that you uh, pray when we pray. We ask that you commune when we commune. And we ask that you continue to come and to share with us in our worship service. I have a call to worship scripture this morning. I've been chosen from Psalms 75 and the verses 1. That's Psalm 75 and 1. God abases the proud, but he exalts the righteous. So in our scripture this morning in Psalm 75 and 1, it reads, We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks. For, you, for your name is near. Men declare your wondrous works. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come just now giving thanks unto you for all of your blessings. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for uh, those that are visiting with us this morning. We thank you for all of those that are here this morning, we ask your continued blessing to be upon us. We ask that you continue to be with those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are bereaved this morning. We ask that you be with them and bless them in a very special way. Father, be with us in our services this morning. We pray that we will all engage in the worship service this morning, realizing that our services is to you and not to us. So we just ask that you be with us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us say amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord on this great Sunday morning. Where could I go? Where could I go? Leaving below, here in this so sinful world, come on, I said, a holy comfort can afford, we'll strive in the law, yeah, to face temptation, so Jesus tell me where. Could I go but to the Lord? Oh, oh, come on, I said, where could I go? Where could I go? Come on, I was seeking in the refuge for my soul. Oh, come on, I said, I need. In the frame, come on to save me in the air. Jesus, tell me where could I go but to the Lord? You know, I said, a neighbor's a kind, yeah, I love them, everyone. You know, I said, a we. Get along and sweet accord. Oh, but, but when my soul yeah, needs man from above, she just tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, I said, where? Could I go and hear all way? Could I go? Come on, I said to see. Ye in the refuse for my soul. Ever you know we need. Ye 
Can a friend come on to save me? In the end, you just tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Lord, you know I said a life here is grand. Yeah, with friends I love so dear. Come on, I said a comfort I get from God's own word. Oh, yeah. Come on, I said a yeah. When I face, come on, the chilling hand of death. She just tell me where could I go but to the Lord. Everybody sing, she just tell me where could I go. Oh, yeah, oh, where could I go. Come on, I will see. In the refuse for my soul, yeah, and you know it. Need in the friend, come on to say me in the end. She just tell me where could I go but to the Lord. One more time, oh, tell me where. Could I go? Oh, 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 yeah. Could I go? You know I was seeking the refuge for my soul. Oh, you know we need in the friend to save me in the end. She just tell me where. Could I go but to the Lord? Let us say amen. <clears throat> All my trials. Raise your hands if you've ever been in a trial in your life. That should be everybody in the building. All my trials. Take them to the Lord. Is that right? All of my, my trials, oh, oh yeah, all of my, my care is singing, oh, I can tell them to my Lord and heal my burdens be come on through the pain through the pain yeah and the strength come on the strength only only Jesus Oh, yeah, bring me oh, to all my trials, all my, my trial year, and all of my trials. Oh, 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 come on, oh, oh, my kids, oh yeah, kids, if we sing and I can tell them to my Lord and heal my burdens, bear through the pain, through the pain, oh, the pain, and the strength, nobody but Jesus, only, only, only Jesus, yeah, brings me home through all my trials, all my 
trial year and all on my knees. Oh, yeah, yeah, about in prayer. Oh, yeah, prayer. Come on, my sailors, sing, and I take all my trials to God and gently gently lay them there oh when he still hears yes he does oh dries my tears Oh, nobody can do that but Jesus. Only, only Jesus. Oh, gives me strength to my trials. All my, my trial year and burden low. Full of care, yeah. Come on, church, we're singing sorrows away, and my shoulders down, oh, and fill me with despair. Sing it, sing it, but. But God knows, yes, He does, He knows all mercy shows. Only, only, only Jesus, oh, yeah, gives me hope through. All my trial, all everybody sing, come on, all of my trial, yeah, come on, and all of my care, oh yeah, my care. Oh, turn away singing, I can tell them, them to my Lord, and, and heal my burden, burdens bear, come on and through the pain, oh, the pain. And the train, oh yeah, only, only Jesus, oh brings me home to all, oh, oh my trials, oh my. My try. Let us pray. Father God, we've come before your throne this morning, giving your honor, praise, and glory. Thanking you, dear God, for this opportunity that we have. We come before you got the throne this morning, dear God, recognizing who you are, recognizing that you are the creator of the earth, recognizing, dear God, that you are the source of all life that exists, recognizing, dear God, that you are the source of all blessings and everything that we know and believe and everything that we learn. Yeah. So we come before your throne this morning, dear God, asking for you to let your spirit just, just be quickened within our hearts and quickened within this worship service this morning. We come thinking, dear God, and acknowledging that 
You are the God who owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills. We come recognizing and remembering to God that you are the God that stopped the sun from going down. That you are the God that raised the dead. That you are the God that walked with Job, the God, as he went through his trial. So, dear God, we come before your throne this morning asking for you to bless us in such a manner. We do not come before you, dear God, asking to survive. We're not coming even, dear God, to ask for a reasonable portion of help. But dear God, we're coming before your throne this morning asking you to let, you, let our cups run over. We're asking you this morning, dear God, that you will reach into our lives, dear God, and not just let us survive, but let us thrive. Yes. We're asking you this morning, dear God, if you will come into where the heart is broken, dear God, and allow us to rejoice in your spirit. We're asking you, dear God, to allow us to receive the financial blessings, dear God, that we need, not just to get by, dear God, but that we may glorify and praise your name, dear God, and that others may look upon us and know that we're the children of the God who created the universe. Father God, we just come before your throne this morning, dear God, because as you give us these things, we know that you have the power to do so. And so, Father God, we will praise your name for what you're about to do in our lives. We will glorify you today, dear God. We will walk, dear God, as you would have us to walk. We thank you for forgiveness of sin. We thank you, dear God, that you are patient with us. We thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy. Father God, we do not want to continue to try your grace and your mercy. We do not want to always be coming before your throne, dear God, because we have fallen short, dear God. Help us to be the children that you would have us to be. Help us to be the people that you would have us to be. Help us to be those that, look, that people will look upon, and because they know us, dear God, they will want to know you. So, Father God, we just thank you for so many things that you have done, and we look forward to the blessings, and we will praise your name this morning in this worship service. We will praise you in song. We praise you in this prayer. We praise you when we take our communion to God, and we will praise you to God as the word is, is delivered unto us from your servant. Father God, we just thank you so much for Brother Ross and his family. We're so grateful to God for the leadership that you've given us here, and we just thank you, dear God, because Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ is a blessed congregation. Yeah. And we will praise your name and let the world know, dear God, how blessed we are because of you, because of your son. There is nothing that we have and nothing that we have done that is by our own power. It is because of you, Father. So, Father, we just come before your throne and we just say thank you. Thank you for what you've given us. Thank you for help. Thank you for strength, dear God. Thank you for the trials that we go through that build us up to be the people you would have us to be. But above all, dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Washington, for that great prayer. Amen. Amen. When morning comes, when morning comes, trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand you all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with desire, and we'll follow till we die. Come on, we will understand it better by and by. We'll now buy. Getting by, oh, when the morning comes, yeah, you know that, all oh, the saints of God are gathering home, and we will tell the story, come on, I said, how we overcome, and we will understand it better. By and by, come on, I said, we are often destitute of the things that life demand, yeah, want the shelter and the food, yeah, but thirsting heals and the barren land, but we're trusting in the Lord and according to his word, yeah, we will understand it better by and by, yeah, singing by, by and by, oh, when the morning comes, oh, that you know that all oh, the saints of 
God a gathering for, and we will tell till the story come on. I said, ah, we overcome and we will understand did better by and by. Come on, I said, the imitation hidden snares will often take us underwear. Come on, and our hearts are made to believe yeah, for each thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test come on when we try to do our best, but, but we'll understand it better by and by. Come on, I said, by. By and by, oh, when the morning comes, oh, that you know that all, all the saints of God are gathering point, and we will tell, tell the story, come on, how we overcome, and we will understand. Stand it better by Yeah, come on, I said by and by Oh, when the morning comes Oh, that you know that all oh, oh, the saints of God I gather went home and we will tell Tell the story, come on, I, we overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. The church say amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord on this great Sunday morning, and it's good to be back at the Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ. Just was away for a quick minute with my, my great family. I took my wife and my children and my mother-in-law and my mother. We went all the way to Boston. And so we had an outstanding time. I was the chauffeur the whole time. But they had an extremely great time. Amen. It's good to be in the house. And Brother Ross, during the worship there, I, I, I put it on YouTube, but I, I shouldn't have done that. But I did just for a brief moment while I was in the service there. I just wanted to know what was going on back here at home. Is that all right? <laughs> I really did, but it's good to be back. We'll sing hallelujah by and by. The next voice you will hear will be that of Brother Lamont Ross, the minister of the great Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, and we're gonna sing, yeah, we're gonna sing, come on, abide, and abide, come on, I said, how the ransom singers will together to live that hymn, and we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing, come on, oh, what a joy, oh, what a joy, come on, when we get home, and you know it is, rest beneath, you know that a cloud is a dawn, you know I said in, in that land, you know we sing, sing, so never, never gonna die, and we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing, come on, I said a bye. In the back, come on, I said, in that mighty chorus, voices will so sweetly blend, and we're gonna sing. Yeah, we're gonna sing. Come on, I said, bye. In the back, come on, I said, gone will be our sadness, pleasures, there will never end, and we're gonna sing. Yeah, we're going to sing, come on, oh, what a joy, oh, what a joy, you know when we get home and you know we rest, rest beneath. 
you know that cloud is so dark. You know what's heading in in that land. You know we're saying, saying, so never, never gonna die, and we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing. Come on, I said, uh, buy in and buy. Come on, I said, a victory and love will be our everlasting theme. And we're gonna sing. Yeah, we're gonna sing. Come on, I said, a praise in our Redeemer. There beside the crystal stream. And we're gonna sing. Come on, we're gonna sing. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a joy. Oh, what a joy. You know when we get home and you know me rest. Rest beneath. You know that a cloud is a dog. You know what's at the end. In that land, you know we're the same, same, so never, never gonna die. And we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing, oh yeah, oh what a joy, oh what a joy, you know when we get home and you know we rest. Rest beneath, you know that a cloud is a dumb and wind in that land. You know we're sing, sing, so never, never gonna die. And we're gonna sing, we're gonna sing, oh yeah, by and by. People of God said, praise the Lord. Uh, truly, it is good to be a Christian, uh, to serve the living God. We thank God for his goodness, for his abundant grace and his mercy. Uh, we want to welcome all of those who may be visiting with us, whether in person or online. We're glad that you chose to be a part of the worship here at the Church of Christ on uh, Marcellus Avenue. If you're in the building and you did not get a chance to fill out a guest card, if you uh, would just raise your hand, our ushers will make sure that you receive one and you can place that card uh, in the offering tray. Uh, if you are online and visiting and would like to connect with us, you can uh, just put in the uh, chat on YouTube that uh, you are visiting. You can reach out to us through our church app or through our website, and we'd love to be able uh, to uh, connect with you and uh, have conversation with you. Uh, we invite you this morning to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 2 and 3 on uh, this morning. Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 2 and 3. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading of the Word of God from uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, verses 2 and 3. There, uh, the Bible says, I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. Uh, indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women uh, who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Uh, you may be seated. When Christians clash is our subject for uh, this morning. Uh, today we will both end our series on women of influence uh, and begin a new series entitled Difficult Relationships. Uh, anybody ever have any difficult relationships? Uh, your, your relationship status is it's complicated. Uh, things don't uh, quite seem right between you and the other people. There's just some stuff in life that 
is hard and there, there are some challenges uh, in our relationships. There's, there are times in our lives when the greatest challenges that we face are in our relationships with other people. Uh, we, we all know of and perhaps have been in conflict uh, with people in our families or a conflict among co-workers, between neighbors, uh, between uh, people who used to be friends. And uh, anytime you are dealing with people, uh, it can get messy. Uh, we disagree. Uh, we do others wrong and others wrong us. Uh, we have misunderstandings and miscommunications. We get angry uh, with each other. Uh, and if you're going to be around people, at some point, there will be an opportunity for conflict. Uh, you don't have to go looking for it. Uh, it's just going to come out. It's just going to happen in the natural course of life. And the question is, how do we deal with these situations in a way uh, that pleases and honors God? Uh, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul notes a conflict between two co-workers. Uh, these co-workers, they're uh, not uh, working at the local grocery store together. They are, are, are not working at uh, your uh, home department store. They are not co-laborers at uh, the U.S. federal government or uh, some other agency. These co-workers are co-workers in the Lord. Two sisters in Christ, women of influence, in the church, having conflict with each other. And there are several insights that we can gain from uh, Paul's admonition regarding this conflict between co-workers, between these two sisters, that uh, will help us as we deal with disagreements that may arise in our relationship with others and as we are called on to step into this space of being a bridge, being a peacemaker between people who are having conflict with each other. Uh, we see in this text how to cultivate an environment that seeks to get conflict resolved. Uh, there are several steps that uh, we can take, and uh, we're, we're not dealing with these texts necessarily in the order, or these steps rather, in the order that you should do them, but uh, it, it's more uh, like if you were to take everything and put it all together, you would have a good model for conflict resolution. Uh, we are going to deal with them in the order that they appear in the text. The, the first, uh, if you're taking notes, overall arching point is if you want to be able to resolve conflict, you need to talk it out. Amen. Talk it out. Uh, and we have some sub points under this one point that will make up the bulk of our message here today. We need to be able to talk it out. If conflict is ever going to be resolved, there needs to be a conversation. Uh, I've never known anything uh, to get resolved uh, if the people refuse to talk to each other. Uh, there, there, there might have been uh, something there, but it was not a resolution to the conflict. Uh, you, you might have said we will ignore it, but ignoring something is not the same as resolving it. Uh, there are too many times we just want to ignore stuff. Uh, act like we're good. Act like it didn't happen. Uh, act like uh, as long as you stay over there and I stay over here, then it's all good. Uh, but you have to talk it out. Uh, and in resolving conflict, uh, we see here in the text, there is an outside interest to see the conflict resolved. There's an outside interest to resolving the conflict. Paul writes this letter and he says, I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. Paul is aware of this conflict between these two sisters, and he can't just let them live at odds with one another. 
Uh, his interest is not in drama. Paul's interest is in unity. Uh, so many times, conflict does not get resolved because others don't seem interested in getting the conflict resolved. Uh, people will know that there is some tension there, but they take the attitude, that's not my business, that's between them, they need to figure it out. And then you have other people who want to stir the pot because they like mess. Uh, they, they, they like to hear people having conflict and beef with each other. They, they like it, but the truth is that the church is not a reality TV show that is all about ratings. It is the family of God that's all about reconciliation and restoration. People need to be able to come together. And if you stop and think about it, the essence of the gospel is the reconciliation of relationships. At its heart and core, the gospel is about bringing people back into a right relationship with God. And scripture teaches us that you cannot be right with God and not be right with your brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 and 21 says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him that the one who loves God should love his brother also. And of course, John is uh, using this term brother in the generic sense to refer to brothers and sisters. And you, you can't go to this verse and say, well, well, I don't have no problem with my brothers. It's just my sisters I got problems with. Uh, no, no, that, that's not what the text is saying at all. If you're going to say you love God, it is impossible for you to love God and hate the people of God, hate those who are created in the image of God. And the church should be the one place in the world where we are not okay with people not being okay with each other. Uh, Paul, Paul understood that this conflict between these two women would have a negative impact not just on these two women but it would have a negative impact on the church and be a threat to the feathering of the gospel there in Philippi. Uh, members take sides. Yodia's friends start mistreating Syntyche. Syntyche's friends stop talking to Yodia. And then visitors among the church, they uh, can sense the tension when they would come in and visit and they would sense that something uh, just isn't right about this place. Something is going on here and, and I don't want to be a part of it. If I know about it and hear about it and feel it from the outside, I can just imagine what's going on on the inside. The, the relationship and its tension was a threat not just to these two women, but a threat to the gospel. There is too much at stake for things to remain this way there is too much at stake for the relationship to continue to be strained. And so are there some saints who are taking interest in seeing the conflict between other members resolved and the relationship restored? Yeah. If you're going to talk it out, you need to Uh, it leads to encouragement. Uh, Paul uh, wants them, wants to encourage them to get this conflict resolved. Uh, Paul writes, I urge Yodia and I urge Syntyche. Uh, it, it's, it's like Paul has gone uh, to each one of them uh, and, and he says, Yodia, I want you to get it right with Syntyche. Then he says, Syntyche, I, I want you to get it right with Euodia. Uh, 
you all need to get together by getting together. Uh, he pleads with both of these women to live in harmony in the Lord. Now, think about the context in which Paul does this. The only reason we know their names is because Paul called them out in this letter to the church at Philippi. Uh, the fact that he calls their names in this public letter to the church suggests that the church knew about the beef that was between them. He wasn't telling the church of anything that they didn't already know. And for him to write about it in this letter meant that this was not some passing conflict that had just happened that was going to blow over. No, this had been going on for a while between these two sisters. You know how we do it. Sit on opposite sides of the auditorium. Leave out of different doors. And if we have to encounter one another, we just wave and keep it moving or act like we don't even see the other person. Uh, we make decisions about which service we're going to go to based on who's not going to be there. Uh, which, which ministry we're going to be involved in versus, based on who is not involved in that ministry. Uh, Paul says, stop playing games and be of the same mind in the Lord. Agree with each other and stop avoiding each other. Uh, Paul places the responsibility for the resolution squarely on the shoulders of these two sisters. He pleads with both of them, live in harmony in the Lord. Uh, notice what Paul does not do. Paul does not take sides on this issue. Uh, he's not judging who's right or who's wrong here. He simply says to them, the two of you need to be united in your direction, united in your thought and will, so that God will be glorified. How often do we know about conflict, yet fail to encourage people to resolve the conflict? And one of the reasons we uh, tend to shy away from getting involved in uh, these conflicts is because the people who are involved want us to take a side. Uh, they, they want to tell you their story before the other person uh, comes to tell you their side of the story. Uh, and wisdom says you should not take sides because in most cases, both people bear some responsibility in the conflict. Listen to the wisdom of Proverbs 18, 17. Proverbs 18, 17. I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. The first to state his case seems right until another comes and cross-examines him. Uh, you, you know how, how it is. You, you hear your friend's side of the story uh, and uh, you've already decided the other person was wrong. Uh, you don't ask any questions. You, you need to go through this cross-examination uh, process. If you, if you only hear one side of the story, then that means that you only have one side of the story. And while what the person says may be true, it's not the whole truth. See, people tend to leave out the details that would incriminate them and cast them in a negative light. We talk about what the other person did, but we don't talk about what we did before the other person did what they did. You know, it's kind of like in a sporting event. You ever be watching a basketball game and you see somebody throw a punch, and the person who threw the punch got the technical foul, uh, but when the camera goes back to see what happened before the punch was thrown, uh, what you discover is that the reason why they threw the punch was because the other person did something dirty to them. Uh, but we only see part of the truth. Yeah, it's, it's true that he threw a punch, but why did he throw 
the punch. The, the other person seemed right until questions are asked and there is a cross-examination. So, so don't choose sides. Hear both sides of the matter. You cannot be a peacemaker if you let your biases cloud your judgment. Uh, sometimes we, we don't even feel like we need to hear the other side of the story once we know who the other person involved was. It's like, oh yeah, that's what, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you're telling me the truth because uh, I, I can see them doing that. No, you need to get both sides of the story because more often than not, both people bear some of the blame. There is the encouragement uh, for uh, these sisters to resolve uh, this conflict. You all get together and work it out. And there's a confidence that this conflict can be resolved. Uh, this issue that the two women were having, it was not an insurmountable issue. Uh, Yodia Sintaki, you are both spiritual enough to make conflict resolution happen. You need to have the right attitude towards each other and work in harmony together. Agree based on your common bond in the Lord. You need to have a harmonious attitude with each other. Uh, this uh, suggestion, uh, this uh, imploring, this begging that Paul does live in harmony in the Lord lets us know that the issue was not one of doctrine or of morality. Because had it been a doctrinal or a moral issue, Paul would have called out the person who was wrong and said the wrong person needs to get right. Uh, he does this in several places in scripture where he calls out the person who's wrong and says help this wrong person get right but that's not what he does here he urges both of them so the issue is not doctrinal it is, it is not moral uh, see the things that we typically fall out about have nothing to do with book chapter and verse I, I've, I've yet to uh, hear somebody say, you know, this person violated Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 32, and that's why I'm mad at them. Most of the times, it has absolutely nothing to do with book, chapter, and verse. The issue is about personality and personal opinions. There's something something uh, very intriguing about these two names because uh, the names Yodia and Syntyche really paint a picture for uh, what happens in conflict between two people. Yodia means prosperous journey. Uh, in modern language, we would say uh, that this is someone who has arrived. She's gotten somewhere in life. She has been successful. A syntyche means pleasant acquaintance or happy chance. Uh, the verb is, uh, or, or the, 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 the verb form of this word uh, that has the same stem as the noun syntyche means to meet with. Uh, so her name is reflective of a person who's a people's person, someone who never met a stranger and who makes everybody feel welcome and at home, someone who tends to be happy-go-lucky and carefree. Uh, do you see the potential for a clash of personalities here? You have a conflict, and I'm not saying this was the conflict between these two sisters. I'm, I'm talking about what their names mean. Uh, you have a conflict between the go-getter and the social butterfly. One person's primary focus is results. The other person's primary focus is relationships. One person's life is structured 
and scheduled, the other person goes with the flow. One person dots every I and crosses every T, while the other person says, oh, it'll all work out in the end. One person is all about taking care of business, and the other person wants to make sure everybody feels good. One person has a backup plan to the backup plan, and the other person says, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. I don't even want to think about it right now. One person lives by hard and fast rules, and the other person says they're just recommendations and suggestions. Personalities can get in the way when we are working together, and often it's the clash of the personalities that is the problem. The go-getter versus the social butterfly, the one who is driven by results versus the one who is driven by relationship, the one who is all about the rules versus the one who is all about how it feels and we end up clashing yet despite the clash between Christians we can still be of the same mind because we are of the same mind in the Lord we don't have to agree on everything but there are some things that we can agree on because we are in the Lord those who are in the Lord ought to be able to agree that God wants the lost saved and that is his will and we don't want to do anything that stands in the way of lost people being saved. Can we agree on that? Can we agree to treat each other how we want to be treated? Can we agree on that in the Lord? Can we agree to love like Christ has loved us because love covers a multitude of sin? Can the people of God agree on that in the Lord? Can we agree that we both need grace and mercy every now and then? Can we agree that we both make mistakes and we both sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God we ought to be able to agree on that can we agree to forgive as Christ has forgiven us can we agree on that can we agree that right is right and wrong is wrong and not everything is an issue of right and wrong some stuff is just a matter of opinion can we agree to be of the same mind in the Lord Amen. there's confidence that these two sisters can work it out, then there is assistance uh, to see the conflict resolved. Uh, verse number three, Philippians chapter four. Indeed, true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. The assistance offered to get the conflict resolved. Paul uh, tells his fellow companion in the gospel, help these women to get along, brother. Yeah. Uh, the congregation was a partnership. And as the body of Christ, members of the body were to address this matter objectively, frankly, lovingly and spiritually. Uh, don't get all in your flesh. Get into the spirit. Address this matter. Uh, these women were co-workers with Paul in the gospel. And Paul reminds them that there, that there are several of us who work together and our names are in the book of life. Uh, see, that there's some in eternal implications here. If y'all don't get this thing together, uh, these sisters were too important to the kingdom for them to live in this state of conflict. Uh, sisters and brothers, there are times when people will need help to work out their differences. We may be the ones who have to step in and say, You've both done too much good to let this be how the final chapter in your life is written. 
We, we've, we've struggled together, y'all. We've worked in the gospel together. We've been through too much. We, we have fought the devil together, and I want to help you to not fight each other. It's important to help people in the church have the same mind in the Lord because unity is the hallmark of the church. Unity is produced by the Holy Spirit but must be maintained by those in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. The Spirit produces the unity but those who are Christians have to protect the unity. It's uh, each of us living in the power of the Holy Spirit that allows the body of Christ to be united. And the problem is that unresolved disagreements lead to discord and discord leads to division. And where there is division, the devil wins. Let me say that again. Unresolved disagreements lead to discord. Discord leads to division. And where there's division, the devil wins. So help them work it out because we want the victory to go to God and not to Satan. Help them, help them work it out. I know it'll be uncomfortable for you to step into this conflict, but, but help them work it out. I know things may get awkward, but, but help them work it out. I know uh, that you don't want them to, or one of them or both of them to get upset with you, but help them work it out. I know they should be able to work it out themselves, but it hasn't happened yet, so somebody help them work it out. Sisters, and brothers, those who are having conflict with each other need to talk it out. But then, as we look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, there's additional insight that emerges on this whole idea of conflict resolution. One of the things that we are often guilty of is separating verses in scripture uh, and sometimes we make them stand alone like it's a bumper sticker uh, rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice and, and that, that verse does preach all by itself but I want you to see it in the broader context of what Paul had just said about these two sisters getting it together uh, he, he says I urge Euodia and Syntyche uh, live in harmony with each other in the Lord. And then my true companion helped these sisters work it out. Their names and Clement's name and all of those who have been co-laborers in the gospel, our names are written in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What are you saying? What are you saying? Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Paul had just basically said, y'all need to talk it out. But now he says, in essence, uh, if you want to resolve this conflict, you need to laugh it out. Uh, there needs to be some rejoicing that happens in the Lord. And this phrase in the Lord is an important phrase because he returns to it again uh, here. He, he says in verse number four, rejoice in the Lord. In verse number two, he said, you all need to live in harmony in the Lord. What happens in the Lord is powerful and is bigger than anything that can happen outside of the body of Christ. Because we are in the Lord, there's some impossible, seemingly impossible things that can happen because with God, all things are possible. See, if we really believe all things are possible, uh, that verse isn't just about uh, your, your, your bank account. 
It's not just about uh, your welfare and your well-being. If we really believe with God all things are possible, it's about your broken relationships. It's about the challenges that you face in life. It's about overcoming hurdles. It's about doing the difficult things, doing the hard work, and coming out on the other side better. With God, all things are possible. So learn how to rejoice in the Lord. Laugh it out. We ought to be able to celebrate together. We can rejoice about the good things that God has done through us in the past. Remember the joy that we felt when we were working together to advance the message of Christ. Don't be so uptight. Learn how to rejoice. Don't take life so seriously. Learn how to rejoice. Lighten up a little bit. Don't be so sensitive thinking that people are talking about you when they really aren't. Don't take everything so personal. Laugh it out. Learn how to rejoice. Uh, too many times. We get all up in our feelings because we think people are talking about us when they aren't. Now, how would it, how would it look if someone said to me, Brother Ross, your wife is so kind. And my response is, oh, so you think I'm not nice? You think I'm mean or something, huh? You paying someone else a compliment is not saying anything about me. It's speaking well of them. Ain't nobody talking about you right now. So get over it. Laugh it out. Rejoice. Talk it out. Laugh it out. Then Paul says smooth it out. Let your gentleness let your gentle spirit be known to all the Lord is near uh, as you talk it out smooth it out talk to each other with gentleness apologize for your role in the conflict listen to the other person's perspective and put yourself in his or her shoes gentleness. Don't be so quick to fly off and go off. With all that you're getting, get an understanding, gentleness. Learn how to yield and be flexible, gentleness. Be humble enough to realize that winning the argument isn't worth losing the relationship. Mm, I think I just said something right there. Sometimes we're so focused on winning that we end up losing trying to win. Winning the argument isn't worth losing the relationship. And I've shared this with you before, but I'm going to share it again. One of the best pieces of marriage advice I got before I even had a girlfriend was this. Sometimes it's going to have to be enough for you and God to know that you were right. Trying to win it all will cause you to lose everything. Gentleness, smooth it out. Then Paul says, pray it out. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Pray, pray it out. Before you talk to the person, pray it out. And remember I said I'm not giving you these in the order you should do them because really you ought to pray it out first. Uh, pray together. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a conflict with the other person, y'all pray together. Uh, I, I think scripture tells us to uh, 
pray for those who despitefully use us, didn't he? Uh, and if I remember right, it, it, that's in red letters in my Bible. Uh, so uh, we ought to take all the scripture uh, as valuable, but I know some of us value the stuff in red more than we value the stuff in black. So that, that's in red letters. Pray, pray it out. Pr- pray together. Pray for peace in the situation. Pray for patience. Pray for perspective. Lord, help me not to just see stuff how I see it. Help me to see people how you see them. Help me to see the situation how the other person sees it. Pray for the healing of the relationship. Pray that you will not harbor bitterness in your heart. Pray pray for it. Pray that you can hear each other's heart even when you may not use the right words. Uh, See, sometimes we get caught up in what people say and we fail to hear the heart of the person. And some of us have a degree in picking apart what people say that's all we do. We, 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 we have a PhD in picking apart people's words. Learn to listen to the heart. Listen for the heart of the person. Get a sense of the spirit of the person. Pray for perspective. Talk it out. Laugh it out. Smooth it out. Pray it out. And God will work it out. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, God will work it out. Uh, And the thing is, you may not be able to explain it or fully understand how God moved in healing that relationship, but you know that he did it because you sense his peace. He says, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind. And all these years I've read that, I missed that right there. Will guard your heart and your mind. The, 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 the peace of God will protect you. Uh, but the peace of God will not just protect you, but he will protect all of you. Paul says, guard your heart and your mind. And and often we we think that heart and mind are synonyms, and in many cases they they are. But but what Paul is in essence saying is, is that the heart is where your emotions are. It's your emotional center. So the peace of God will guard your emotional center. It will protect your emotions. But then... The peace of God will also guard your mind. And the mind is where your thoughts originate. So God's peace stands guard over your emotions and your thoughts so that you can be at peace in any situation. God's peace protects you from thinking the worst and allows you to see the best. God's peace keeps you from getting all up in your feelings and protects your heart from yourself. God's peace allows you to be okay even when stuff doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to. Even when life doesn't go exactly how I planned, I can have peace because the peace of God, which is incomprehensible, is guarding, protecting my heart and mind. I've lost a lot. I've been through a lot, but I haven't lost my mind because God's peace is protecting me. Somebody ought to say, thank God for his peace. I have peace to know that God has already worked it out even when I ain't figured it out. 
even if they never apologize, I still have God's peace protecting my emotions and my thoughts. Even if I never get the answers to the questions as to why they did what they did, I still have God's peace protecting my heart and mine. The peace of God, uh, which passes all understanding. I can't tell you why I'm all right right now. All I can say is God's peace has been protecting both my emotions and my thoughts so that I can be at peace. And if you want this peace, you need to be in Christ Jesus because that's where this peace is. The world can't give it to you. And the world show can't take it away uh, because uh, the peace of God is protecting you. If you want God's peace, believe Jesus to be the son of God. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus as Lord. And we will baptize you this morning for the forgiveness of your sins. You become a Christian, a child of God, a part of the body of Christ. If you want to respond to the invitation by being saved, we encourage you to walk forward right now. If you uh, wish to become a part of the body of Christ here. Uh, we encourage you to walk forward. If you are uh, here and you uh, are a member of the body here and you wish to ask for prayers, you can simply stand right where you are. Ushers will uh, give you a card and we will pray for you right now. Thank God for his peace that helps us to be okay uh, no matter what the situation may be in life. This time, Shepherd Bradford will come before us and lead us in prayer. Let the church say amen. amen. Well, the word, uh, Brother Ross did an outstanding job. And basically, all I can say is after that message is, your family is so nice. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just joking. He, he did an outstanding job. Those are golden nuggets that will help us further our cause and our relationships with one another. Uh, those that we may have conflict with. We have a, a tool now. We have words. We have a whole what is it, a diagram on how to survive Christian classes. And I think that's a great message that he provided this morning. I think it's, it's profitable for all of us. So, but I don't have anyone standing, but we're still going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer on behalf of Brother Manzay's family and the loss of his mother, and then also in Brother Willie Davis, who's actually in the hospital. Um, so we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer at this time. Father God, we approach your throne of grace in the humblest way that we know how, first giving thanks and an honor uh, for your manservant for the message that he's given us this day to help us in a way to be better Christians, how to resolve conflict in our lives regardless of whether we believe we are right or wrong. We just help us to understand that your peace will always work things out in our lives. We come on behalf of our loved ones, uh, Brother Manze and, and the loss of uh, Sister Manze, his mother. We just ask you to go, and Lana, to go with them and, and give them uh, the strength that they need, mother, grandmother, friend, aunt. We just want you to go with them and strengthen them in a way that will be beneficial, helping them to uh, glory in the amount of years that they had her with, with them, 94 years. We just want you to... Uh, be mindful of, of their strength that they may need at this time. Uh, give them that peace, give them that understanding, but also give them the will of knowing that she died in the Lord. Uh, we just ask a special prayer on our brother Willie uh, as he's about to go through some tests to help them finalize and, and work through the best procedures in order to provide him the comfort that he needs uh, in his strengthening his, his physical condition. Uh, we just ask you to go with Sister Davis and the family that they not grow weary and well-doing and that they be strengthened and, and, and be patient and, and that the doctors will always provide the best care and the best understanding. But not only them, Lord, pray for all of us and in our daily walk. The things that we strive to do should always bring glory and honor to your name. If we are faltering in any avenue of our lives, help us 
as Brother Ross says, let us tear up our PhDs and, and understanding of how somebody else said something, but help us to be mindful, have the right spirit in hearing their heart versus actually understanding maybe their words that did not come out correctly. But again, give us the strength and the wisdom to continually study your word because we know that studying your word and applying it to our hearts will give us that guidance that we will need. We just ask these blessings in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come to another part of our service, uh, our offering in our collection. We're going to ask you, those that have prepared yourselves, we know that uh, God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a, a prosperous giver. Um, God loves a giver that's not grudgingly of not necessity, and he also loves a generous giver. So as you prepare yourselves so much as you saw this day approaching, that you may be able to do that as the brothers come forward at this time. Let us give thanks at this time. Father God, we approach your throne again on the behalf of those who made their offering this day. We pray that you would go with them and, and continually bless them in a way that will be profitable for their lives. Help, them in their un help us all in our understanding of the giving, uh, that we have the right spirit, the right attitude, as well as the right amount. We just help us to be mindful of our responsibilities. Help those that had the giving heart, but not the means at this time. Help them to be able to either secure those means or prioritize their lives in a way that they'd be able to give at the next appointed time. But help those that oversee this budget that they would do it in a way that always bring glory and honor to your name and strengthening your kingdom. We just ask these blessings in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for communion at this time. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. Yeah, for me. He come on one day when I was lost. Yeah, he died upon the cross. And you know, I know it was the blood for me. He come on day, march him up. A hill, oh yeah, they march him up a hill, you know, they march him up a hill for me, oh yeah, one day. When I was lost, you knew he died upon the cross. You knew, I know it was the blood, yeah, for me. He, oh yeah, they pierced him in his side. You know they pierced him in his side. Come on, they pierced him in his side for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, you knew he died. Upon the cross, you know, I know it was the blood 
come on for me he, you know he never said a mumbling word come on he never said a mumbling word oh yeah he never said a mumbling word yeah for for me oh you know one day when i was lost you know he died upon the cross and you know i know it was the blood of for for me and oh yeah he hung his head and died you know he hung his head and died you know he hung his head and died for for me oh you know one day when i was lost you know he died upon that cross and you know i know it was the blood of for for me he and you know he's come in a back again come on he's coming back again come on he's coming back again for for me yeah 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 one day when i was lost you know he died upon the cross you know i know it was the blood yeah for me he one more time here and you know he rose up from the grave come on he rose up from the grave you know he rose up from the grave for all of us oh yeah you know one day when i was lost you know he died upon the cross and you know I, I know it was the blood yeah for me At this time, we come to partake of a memorial that was instituted uh, by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the eve in which he was betrayed. A couple weeks ago, uh, Brother Washington stood before us and he said, how do we keep this fresh? How do we uh, keep it personal? And I immediately uh, knew what he was talking about, yes. having, having grown up in the church, having grown up in a small church where we you know, had uh, dedicated people who did certain things every week. And it seemed to be that they would do the same thing every week after week after week. Right. And, and I had to get to be almost a grown man before I knew there were other verses outside of uh, 1 Corinthians that dealt with uh, the Lord's Supper. So I appreciated what he said as how we uh, keep that fresh, but I also took it as a partaker. How do we keep that fresh 
as well. And so I thought about myself and I said that the last time I was broken, uh, last time I was committed a transgression, what did my Lord and Savior do for me? And on that eve, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And that lets me know that I don't have to stay broken because he went to the cross, had his body broken for me. Let us give thanks for the bread. Our God and our Father, we come before you giving you thanks for your dear loving son, Jesus. We give you thanks for giving him to us and we give him thanks for coming to this earth, having his body broken there upon the cross, taking all of our sins with him so that we could be reunited with you. So Father, we ask that as we partake of this bread, we do so with the mindset and the memory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ And we do ask these things and these prayers in his name. Amen. Christ also shed blood on that cross. And again, when thinking of ourselves, there are times when we feel that um, we can't go on anymore. Um, almost as if the, the life has been sucked out of us. But he shed that blood, and blood is flowing through us, which gives us life. And he shed that blood for us, and he said, This blood is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. So that no matter what state that we are in in life, we can remember that our Savior shed that blood so that we can have life. Let us give thanks for this cup. Again, Father, we come before you giving you thanks. We give you thanks again for Jesus. And we thank him for bearing all of our sins, bearing all of our burdens, and taking them to the cross. Not only just taking them to the cross, Father, bearing them, conquering them, and then he rose again to come back, only so that he can come back and to claim us and to bring us to you. So, Father, we do thank you so much for your dear loving son, Jesus. And we do ask these thanks and these prayers in his name. Amen. This is the um, Memorial Day weekend, and we will remember a lot of people. We will uh, commemorate a lot of people for a lot of things that they've done. The difference in that memorial and the the memorial that Christ has made for us is that we will commemorate all the things that Christ has done for us, but the big difference is the memorial that he, he leaves for us not only commemorates what he does, but it brings life for us. And so as you go out throughout this weekend, uh, just remember the greatest memorial ever was that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dying for us, rising so that we can have a chance at eternal life. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we come before you again giving you thanks. Father, we thank you for allowing us to rise out of our beds, to assemble today, to gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, our prayers that our worship service has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight and that you uh, continue to watch over us as we go out 
throughout this week. Father, again, we ask you to watch over those who have asked for uh, your prayers, for your blessings. Uh, Father, we also ask you to be with the leadership here uh, at the Marcellus Avenue Church. Father, we, we bring our, our issues and concerns to them. But Father, one thing we must always be mindful is that they are people too. That they suffer from the same things that we suffer from and that they need our love and our support too. So Father, we ask you to be with the Manze family uh, this week. Uh, continue to watch over them, continue to bless them. And not only just them, Father, but the rest of the leadership here as they are of the like mind, the same mind, that they continue to lift up one another. Father, as we go from this place, we ask that you be with us, that you watch over us, and that you bring us back together again at the next appointed time. Father, we do ask all these things, and we do ask for all these blessings. In the name of thy dear loving son, Jesus, amen. Before we are dismissed, we have a few announcements to uh, make you aware of. Like was mentioned earlier, we want to uh, pray for the Manze and O'Quinn family and the passing of their mother. So just remember those families in your thoughts and prayers this week as we get more information that will be passed on uh, to the church so you will be made aware. And also let's continue to remember Brother Davis that he he is in hospital right now that we will continue to pray for him that his health be restored as, as well. So let's remember both of those families in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, this week, uh, the singles kickback, it will be this Tuesday at 7.30. The singles kickback will be this Tuesday at 7.30. The topic is fighting temptation. When I first saw that, I thought it said the fighting temptation. So I thought about the movie. I said, wow, man, they're going to watch a movie. What, what the single's going to get out of that? But it is titled Fighting Temptation, so it's a whole different subject. <laughs> so don't forget, singles, this Tuesday at 7.30, uh, the singles kick back, uh, the topic Fighting Temptation. And then also uh, from the Metroplex Bible Teachers Workshop, which started on yesterday, uh, we asked them that you, if you have the opportunity to please join, it will start today at 5 p.m. and then it will run through Tuesday. So on Monday and Tuesday, the start time at 6 p.m. So again, that website for the live stream is www.dallasmbtw.org. So we asked them if you are available to please join uh, that workshop today starting at 5 o'clock. Then finally, uh, our, our youth are having a family and friends roller skating, which will be this Saturday, I believe. This Saturday, which is June the 5th, from 12, excuse me, from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Redbird Skate Land. Again, that's for the, uh, the youth is sponsoring a family and friends roller skating. So we're asking you, if you are able to, come out and join us. Again, it's June 5th, from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Redbird Skate Land. Uh, and we are asking you, let me see if I can get all my notes together. Uh, in lieu of any cost, we're asking for donations of hygiene items. So instead of having to pay for the skating event, we're asking you to bring some uh, hygiene items such as soap, deodorant, feminine products, lotion, shampoo, conditioner, hand wipes, those things uh, such as those. Uh, we're asking you to bring those to this event and those donations will be given to the children's home. So we're asking you to please, when you come out, to bring a donation to be given to the children's home. These are all the announcements that we have this morning. You can now consider yourselves dismissed. And as we dis